He was once a four-time world champion, a legend of the sport, only to later become a man that plunged a dagger into his own title hopes. From the triumphant roar of victory to the bitter taste of defeat, the trail this man blazed on the track is one that no one will ever walk again. This is the story of Sebastian Vettel. Embarking on a journey that would propel him to the zenith of motorsport, Sebastian Vettel kickstarted his remarkable path just three and a half years after his birth on the 3rd of July 1987 with a pint-sized cart in a sunny yard in Heppenheim. For Seb, this wasn't just play. It was the beginning of an extraordinary life, an extraordinary career. Amidst the embrace of Heike and Norbert Vettel, who had three other children to care for, young Sebastian's pursuit of racing became a central force. Little did Heike and Norbert know the little child running around in their house would one day make the name Vettel synonymous with brilliance. It would be at the tender age of seven, Sebastian Vettel made his debut on the kart racing seat. Almost instantly, he began collecting victories and championships like prized trophies. One standout moment was when his idol Michael Schumacher presented him with a trophy, a surreal connection between the aspiring racer and the racing legend. Yet dreams require resources, and the Vettel family was not without its financial constraints. The turning point arrived in the form of Red Bull, whose scouts recognized Sebastian's potential and brought him into their young driver's training program, injecting the necessary momentum into building his career. With each lap, each race, Sebastian honed his craft. Transitioning to single-seater racing, he emerged as a sensation. At the age of 17, he dominated the German Formula BMW Championship with an unprecedented 18 wins out of 20 races. He tested a BMW Williams F1 car at 18 and at 19 became a test driver for the BMW Sauber F1 team, showcasing his unwavering dedication by relocating closer to the team's Swiss headquarters. Finally, in 2007, the world witnessed his Formula 1 debut at the US Grand Prix in Indianapolis, substituting for the injured Robert Kubica. Despite many being unaware of the talent of the young German behind the wheel, an astonishing eighth-place finish marked his arrival, making him the youngest driver to ever secure a championship point. This was the day Sebastian Vettel arrived. Soon, the youthful whirlwind found a home with the Red Bull-backed Toro Rosso team, where there were highs and lows, mistakes and triumphs, and his racing prowess matured. A wet Japanese Grand Prix saw him collide needlessly with Mark Webber, but the setback didn't deter him. Days later in China, he stormed from the 17th position on the grid to an impressive fourth-place finish. A transformative 2008 season with Toro Rosso climaxed with a historic victory in Italy, where a rain-soaked monster track set the stage for his first Formula One win. Keep in mind that Seb had managed to win a race for the junior Red Bull team before even the senior one had. It was at this point that the Formula One world was like, hey, this kid isn't half bad. And so he was promoted to Red Bull to partner with the dinosaur Mark Weberanosaurus in 2009. Nobody expected Seb to beat this season Australian, but nobody quite knew what he was made of just yet. Clinching Red Bull's first victory in China, the latter half of the season witnessed Vettel's dominance, propelling him to three more wins and even a runner-up spot in the championship. The 2010 season would unfurl as one of Formula One's most closely contested battles. Amidst the likes of Ferrari, McLaren and Red Bull, each race was a showdown. Sebastian, with his incredible pole positions and relentless pace, remained a front-runner throughout. While tension simmered with his teammate, the collective achievements of Vettel and Weber powered Red Bull Racing to its first ever Constructors' Championship. As the season reached its crescendo in Abu Dhabi, Vettel set fire to the track. A flawless drive from pole secured his fifth win of the year, a feat no competitor at the time could surpass. At 23 years and 133 days, Sebastian Vettel had just made history as the youngest ever Formula One world champion. The boy who'd once raced around his yard in Heppenheim now stood atop the world. In 2011, Sebastian Vettel's title defense wasn't just a victory march, it was a year-long spectacle of dominance that left people hating Vettel. 
It was as if Sepp had decided to make winning a habit, conquering all circuits and rivals with an almost playful ease. The Red Bull Racing RB7 was undoubtedly a marvel, contributing to their constructors' championship, but it was Vettel's sheer prowess that set him apart from anyone on the grid. A record-breaking 15 pole positions out of 19 races, coupled with 11 wins and 6 additional podium finishes, established the 24-year-old German as the youngest driver to claim two consecutive world championships. While his teammate Mark Webber secured a solitary victory in the season's final race in Brazil, Vettel's rare gearbox failure in the same race Sebastian, we have a serious gearbox problem. You have to short shift the second and third on red. And a first lap exit in Abu Dhabi were the only blips on his otherwise stellar campaign. With this triumph, Seb became the first driver since a certain Fernando Alonso in 2006 to clinch back-to-back -back world championship titles. As the 2012 season rolled in, Vettel's path to victory was rife with challenges and strong competition from some of the biggest names in the sport. A 20-race season characterized by rule changes and unpredictable outcomes witnessed eight different victors from six teams. Midway through the season, Ferrari's Alonso seemed poised to capture his third driver's title, having secured three wins to Vettel's one. Yet, Vettel fought back against incredible odds. Taking the helm of his incredible RB8 car, Seb would go on to achieve four consecutive wins and three additional podium finishes. The close-knit battle between Vettel and Alonso had the world watching at the Brazilian Grand Prix, a rain-soaked thriller. Alonso fought valiantly, starting seventh and ultimately finishing second. However, it was Vettel's determination that stood out amidst the chaos. Despite a disastrous first lap that saw his car sustain significant damage, Seb got his head down and finished in sixth place, securing the title by a mere three points. This triumph in particular really showcased Vettel's ascent to greatness. He now stood on equal footing with the likes of Brabham, Stewart, Lauda, Piquet and Senna with his third driving title. That being said, there's another man in the Red Bull these days that might just be rivaling Seb at his peak. I have a video on that you should check out. Now then, the 2013 season would see the King's reign continue, with his fourth consecutive championship coming with a sense of overwhelming supremacy. The Indian Grand Prix saw him claim his 10th victory of the season, a remarkable sixth consecutive win. His teammate Mark Webber found himself on the receiving end of Vettel's skill in Malaysia, defying team orders to give Webber a win. Oh, Sebastian, they need to give him the space, hold position. This is silly, Seb, come on. The 2013 season concluded with a flourish as Vettel secured the remaining three victories, equaling Ascari's decades-old record of nine consecutive wins. With each triumph, Vettel's legacy grew, solidifying his position not just as a remarkable driver, but a legend of the sport. Yet even the reign of a king must come to an end. In 2014, Vettel's form took an unexpected nosedive. Failing to claim a race victory and finishing a subdued fifth in the standings, his performance contrasted starkly with his new teammate, Daniel Ricciardo, who clinched three wins and a stellar third-place finish in the championship. Vettel's difficulties adapting to the new technical regulations casted a shadow on his once exceptional achievements. However, his belief that a change of scenery could reignite his competitive fire found resonance with Ferrari, a team desperately seeking a leader to resurrect its fortunes. The transition proved transformative. Vettel's leadership provided the catalyst for a remarkable revival, revitalizing both the storied Italian team and the charismatic German driver. Fueled by an unwavering work ethic akin to Michael Schumacher's and a contagious positivity, Vettel propelled Ferrari upwards. Amidst Mercedes' dominance in the 2015 season, Vettel's three wins and numerous podium finishes secured him third place among the drivers and elevated Ferrari to second in the team's standings. The following year, though, was a mix of frustration and inconsistency for Vettel. While he notched seven podium finishes and secured fourth place in the championship, a series of missteps from drivers errors to car failures and strategic mishaps marred his campaign. It left many wondering if Seb had just been lucky to win the titles that he had. The following season, 2017, saw Vettel regain his competitive edge. With five victories and only two non-scoring races, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the relentless Lewis Hamilton for the title, but ultimately was only able to finish second. Ferrari's resurgence under his leadership was palpable, though mechanical challenges hindered consistent performances. Vettel's got a major problem, major engine problem. Box, Sebastian, box. We retire the car, I'm afraid. Cracks had emerged. 
Something was not quite right with the German. Episodes of erratic driving pointed to desperation, while his emotional outburst reinforced a reputation for petulance. In Baku, he intentionally collided with Hamilton's leading Mercedes, drawing a penalty. In Singapore, he was involved in a first lap collision. Sebastian Vettel needs to cover him up. Give me right now the inside, oh. and he's crashed. Which resulted in his elimination from the race and hampered his championship prospects. In 2018, despite Ferrari often having the outright better car, Vettel's quest for championship glory was again thwarted by Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes. Although Vettel began the season strong, winning the initial two races and leading the standings until mid-season, his performance would gradually unravel. Both his and Ferrari's, absolutely no one should be surprised by this, erratic displays in response to mounting pressure from the resurgent Mercedes proved disastrous. Despite Ferrari's statistically best season in a decade, Vettel Vettel's five wins, only one post-summer, left the Tifosi and indeed many Vettel fans with a bitter taste in their mouths. But this is Vettel we're talking about. Surely he'd bounce back, right? You can't keep him down. Even his teammates can't keep up with him. Yeah, about that. Sebastian Vettel's fifth season with Ferrari proved to be an even more humbling chapter for the fourth-time champion. While his own struggles resulted in a fifth place finish at the championship, the spotlight was stolen by his rookie teammate, Charles Leclerc. Leclerc's dazzling debut featured 10 podiums, including two wins, a record breaking seven pole positions, and a fourth place overall finish, 24 points ahead of the 32 year old Vettel. Vettel's performance, marked by eight podiums, one win, and two pole positions, displayed traces of desperation. Unforced errors and moments of red mist, most notably a clumsy collision with Leclerc in Brazil that ended both their races cast a dark shadow over his campaign. Even Vettel took accountability for his part in these challenges, stating, I've been around long enough and I'm honest enough to admit that I should have done a better job. In 2020, Vettel's relationship with his Ferrari SF1000, affectionately nicknamed Lucilla, soared even further. Leclerc's superior results and confident demeanor had seen him assume the mantle of Ferrari's team leader, no doubt a bitter pill for Vettel to swallow. The worst part was that early in the season, Ferrari conveyed that his contract would not be renewed for 2021, clearing the way for the 26-year-old Carlos Sainz to replace him. It was a sobering reality check for a man that had once had the world at his feet. Those feelings no doubt translated onto the track, affecting his performance at the pinnacle of motorsport. Amidst a challenging season for Ferrari, which finished sixth in the constructors' standings, Vettel's 13th place finish among drivers was a stark reminder of his fall from grace. Yet, a long-term contract with the newly rebranded Aston Martin F1 team beckoned. Maybe Seb still had a story to tell on the track. But alas, even his new adventures didn't unfold as expected. Two years with Aston Martin yielded 12th place finishes in the driver's standings for Vettel, alongside a modest 7th place standing for the team in the Constructors' Championship. Despite outpacing his teammate Lance Stroll, and let's be honest, that shouldn't really be a benchmark, Vettel's interest in continuing his career waned. Getting a handful of podiums with Aston Martin simply wasn't enough for a man like Seb. And so, midway through the 2022 season, the 35-year-old announced his impending retirement. I hereby announce my retirement from Formula One by the end of the 2022 season. But to reduce Seb to just his shortcomings on the track would be doing a great disservice to the man. Seb wasn't just a racer, he was bigger than the sport. He utilized his platform to advocate for positive change in social justice, politics and the environment. With his distinctive appearance, headband, shaggy hair and unkempt beard, he actively participated in causes, from bee conservation to standing shoulder by shoulder with Lewis Hamilton to cleaning up grandstands after races. Seb was a champion in the truest sense of the word. On his final race day, all the drivers on the grid gathered to honor him in an emotional display of respect and camaraderie. They knew the sport was never going to be the same without that familiar helmet behind the wheel. If only circumstances had granted him one more shot at the title, if only. When Andrea Seidel waved goodbye to his top spot at McLaren during the winter to become the CEO of the Sauber Group, nobody had expected the news that would come our way in May. Audi have now announced their intention to enter the world of Formula One in 2026, taking over the Sauber F1 team. And there is one thing that they hold really dear. 
the German factor. Audi's decided that all their top-notch engines will roll out from the Neuburg hub. It's all part of their grand plan, and they're pulling out all the stops to make sure it clicks. They've got their eyes on a certain man from Heppenheim to lead them to the 2026 Formula One Championship. And boy, if this happens, I will absolutely be there crying in the club. God knows we need Seb back and back for one more rodeo with the top dogs in the sport. It truly would be something special. For a man that made it a habit of bouncing back from impossible odds, this would be just the right ending. If you're interested in seeing how Seb would stack up against Max Verstappen at the peak of his powers, make sure you check out the video I have out comparing them. Maybe you'll have some fun leaving hate comments on it.